This is my Johnson Thunderbolt that I'm in the process of having restored. Today's my second QSO using the amplifier and it seems to work pretty good. Um, I made some modifications. Underneath was an original propeller fan. I took that out and put in a 5 inch muffin fan and instead of blowing air through the tube socket I'm sucking air down and exhausting it from the bottom. That makes it much quieter. Uh, the fan that I'm using is a 1 inch muffin fan that I've relocated. The old propeller fan was sitting way over here and the propeller fan just didn't get enough air across the tube. Now with the fan's proximity and the fact it's 5 inches in diameter as a muffin fan, both tubes get good airflow. So that's a real advantage. One of the other changes I made is I removed the uh, location of the VR stack, all the tubes. They used to be over in this region and I moved them over here. The reason I did that was to provide myself an area that's probably uh, 7 by 10 inches empty right in here where I'm going to put a, uh, another tuning capacitor and uh, inductor to be able to switch the tank down to uh, 160 meters. Of course the low voltage is all solid state and the capacitor bank here is connected to the offboard um, connector here that feeds the high voltage uh, power supply. I outboarded that. This rig weighs 120, 130 pounds, which is uh, too much for my 71 year old frame. So what I've done is I've split it and now I have a power supply down here that's uh, 60 something pounds and I've got a 60 something pound amplifier so I can move it about. I've also got my uh, watt meter up here so I can measure the uh, power. I had it up to a thousand watts today into the dummy load, uh, which doesn't like it. Uh, the dummy load has issues with that, so we uh, modified the dummy load, and I'll tell you about that in a second. In any case, the uh, amplifier over here is run off of my Johnson. This Johnson is one that I had uh, received from another ham, and I took the front panel and sent it to Radio Days. Radio Days took the uh, panel and made up a set of decals, which are available through them now for the Ranger. It's now part of their inventory. And then I got the panel back and I completely stripped it all down, sanded it, made up my own uh, gray paint, and then I painted the rest of it with Kona Brown, which is the color available from Home Depot. And with the Drake 2B receiver, I have the opportunity now to have uh, a hollow state uh, exciter receiver and amplifier. So we're having fun with that. In any case, one thing I wanted to show you, trying to use the amplifier today and test it, I became very dissatisfied with my MFJ uh, antenna tuner dummy load. This is the original lid and there's a slot in here for a 50 ohm resistor that connects to the top and the top has a connector on it and I put the snorkel on there to keep the oil from blowing out of it because it was always seeming to leak. The original seal was not very good. In any case, the problem is that this resistor sits in the tank oil vertically and the top quarter of the tank gets extremely hot. So you only just get a little bit of the tank getting uh, heat into it. The rest of the tank is just sitting there um, cold, cold as can be. And you see the derating chart. Well, the derating chart is not really uh, very effective because I'm only using a portion of the oil. So what I did is I took the resistor out. I got myself another lid. I drilled a hole in it. And I soldered an SO238 connector to it from the bottom. I also soldered it from the top. So what I did to make a, a vent is I put a number 60 drill bit hole through the connector as a breather. That way it has a, a vent and it won't be slopping oil all over the place. And the PL259 is a good enough um, connection that it's not going to be airtight. And it'll still allow the can to expand. But now my resistor is laying horizontal uh, across the bottom of the tank, about one inch from the bottom. I used a bunch of heavy stout wires to run from the bottom of the tank up to the connector. I even put a rubber bumper in there just to be uh, uh, suspenders and belt protected so that the resistor, if it gets banged around, can't touch against the can uh, and short out the RF side of that uh, resistor. So one side's ground, one side's the RF, of course. And uh, that seems to work real good. Now the whole tank will heat up and I'll get better dissipation 
and I can actually load the uh, dummy load a bit more, a bit longer, whereas the original can didn't heat up very well. So that's where we stand at this point. And as I get the uh, 160 meter conversion done in here, I will uh, take another video of it so you can see how I did it. It seems like it should be a fairly simple thing to do, but it's all just a matter of playing around and all that sort of stuff. So this is N4MQ. Have yourself a good day.